Good evening, everyone. Welcome to 10 Days of Power BI with Chinon Sokun for Welcome to 10 Days of Power BI. So we're just going to give a five minutes break for us to join in so we can carry everyone along. So I'm just going to wait for five minutes for more people to join. The time is 6.02 p.m. We're just going to wait for five more minutes for us to join in and we're going to start. So let's just try to carry everyone along. So while we're waiting for others to join in, if you can hear me, please just drop your location in the chat box. Just let me know where you're joining in from. You can just drop that in. Yeah, I can see your locations, I can see Lagos, I can see Enugu. Let's just wait for others to join in. Keep dropping your locations in chat box. Let's know. So two minutes more, and we're going to be we're going to begin today's session. Just two minutes more, and we're going to get into it.
So, yeah, I think we've given enough time for others to join in as well. So let's not waste anyone's time. Let's get into today's topic. So welcome to 10 Days of Power BI once again. My name is Chinon Tsokonko, and today is day four of 10 Days of Power BI. So today we're going to be picking up from where we left off yesterday. So yesterday we were discussing visualizations in Power BI. So we discussed that visualization in Power BI is divided into, it's basically divided into visuals and elements. So we're only able to handle the visuals part. We talked about the use of do not chart. We talked about a bar chart, we talked about stack bar chart and card visuals and the use of slicers. So today we're going to move, we're going to pick up from yesterday and finish that off before we move into today's agenda. So we're going to start off with elements. So we're going to be discussing elements in Power BI. So basically in Power BI, the elements includes your text box, shapes and images. So I would start off with the first one your text box. So text box is just like the name. It just implies a box in which you can type in your text. So in Power BI, you can use your text box to enter in names like the title of your dashboard or the title of your visual. You can use your text box to type that in. And if you have any other information that you want to share in text, let's say you want to be able to explain your visual in text format as well, can just create a text box and you can do that. So I'm going to be showing you that in Power BI as well. The next element is shapes. So shapes comes in different shape. So basically you have a rectangle, you can create a box shape, you can create a line shape. You can use a line shape, um, a line to demarcate. You can use a line to create like a border kind of to separate elements of your visuals so it, so it doesn't look um, jam-packed. I'm going to show you how I used a line shape for one of my dashboards. Moving along to images now, in Power BI, Power BI also offers you the ability to import in any image of your choice to use in a dashboard. Now, this is what I'm going to say, um, using images, images should be thought through well before you use any image. So any image you're using in your dashboard, you should make sure it's not going to be too distracting from the analysis, basically. Too distracting from the story you want to tell. Um, so let's just move on to Power BI and illustrate how you can create a text box, how you can get a shape, and of course, how you can add an image to a visual. So let's get to Power BI now. So this is where this is the data set I was working with yesterday for the 10 days of Power BI. This is still the HR data which I created a sort table. And yesterday I had to create a second sort table to explain this yesterday to someone. So I'm just going to start off with explaining how you can create a text box. So usually when you start your dashboard, you might want to just add a title. So once you need a title. You can come to your home tab and you're going to see insert a text box or you can come to your insert tab and you should still have that option provided under element. So you can see under elements you have text box, shape, image and you have buttons as well. So I'm just going to click on a text box and immediately I select that. I'm just going back to home. Immediately I select that, Power BI is going to give me a text box which is just this year. And this is showing me I can select the font I want and I can increase increase the font size as well. So I'm just going to make this the title of my visual. Let's just say I'm going to make this the title of my visual. I'm just going to place this here. Put this a little bit to the end. So I'm going to increase the font size a bit. Let's say I'm going to use 40. Um, this is 
Palmorial Manufacturing Group. So let me just call this Palmorial Manufacturing Group. I'm just going to call this, uh, I'm going to enter and I'm going to reduce the font size a little bit, pick a simple one, um, pick a smaller size rather, let's go for 24 and like HR analysis, HR data analysis, let's say HR data analysis dashboard. Let's just go with something like this. So there's something I want to do with this visual. This visual is not clearly showing the background as well. So I would like to change the background of my canvas. Remember I said this blank page which I'm placing everything on is my canvas. So I'm going to go over to my format tab and come into my canvas background. I'm just going to change the color to a light gray color. I'll pick the first one and I'm going to reduce my transparency to zero. So I can be able to see that change. So once I do that, you see this light gray as the background color. So that's a little bit better for me for now. So I'm just, I'm just going to leave this. So we've discussed the text box and we can go ahead and discuss our importing a um, We can talk about importing a shape. So suppose you need a line chart, you can, line chart rather if you need a line you can come here to import your shape you come to your inserts tab you're going to see shapes power bi offers you a um, rectangle shapes and so many other shapes but majorly some majorly you might have to use let's say um let's use this shape here let me use a rectangle so it comes in this default blue color because this is the team so I'm, i can change the color to white as well if i want that and I can reduce the size. So I'm just going to reduce this shape color. I'm just going to place that at my end. That's just what I'm going to do. So basically, this is like a rectangle shape. I can change the color so we can see it clearly. I don't like this. I can come over to style. YC color and I change this to a bright white color. You can see that the, um, the border is still a, the color blue, so I can change the border as well. Let's come to the general effect and I'm going to scroll down to where I see my visual border. This, and I'm going to turn it on so I can select the color and pick. I'm going to pick. White. Okay, I still see the between the color. Now, border. Let me just turn this off. So this is basically a shape. Now, for this shape, I can't write anything on this shape. It looks similar to the text box, but I can't write anything on it. But I can insert a text box in a shape. And I can insert an image in a shape as well. So if you want to insert an image, or sometimes you might want to insert your company's logo, but uh, I don't have a logo here to show you that. So I'm just going to be showing you that. OK, I'll probably just show that when we start working on a case study. That will be better then. So we know how to get a text box and how to get a shape. So I'll just show you the image when um, when it applies, I don't think I need an image right now. So I'm just going to go back to the slides. Mm. Yeah, so today's agenda, I'll we'll be talking about, so that's the wrap of yesterday's session. We're just supposed to discuss the other elements. Since we discussed visuals, you have to talk about the elements that you can add up with your visuals, make visualizations in Power BI. Now, I want us to discuss about um, good and bad visuals. 
Then we'll go on to data modeling and why data modeling matters. We'll move on to facts and dimension tables and we'll learn how to create a relationship between tables in Power BI. So moving on, See a lot of data visualization online. So what are the best practices for a good data visualization? So the first thing, this is not just, this is not everything. This is not inclusive of everything as well, but some, but these are just the basics. So you need to make use of an effective visual to tell your story. Making use of an effective visual cannot be overemphasized enough. It helps to tell your story better. Like I always say, if you want to show a seasonal trend or a trend or a time series trend. If you want to show sales by month or sales by the time of the day, it's always best to go with a line chart. A line chart is used for time series data or you can use an area chart as well. Area chart is just going to show you the magnitude as well. So a line chart or an area chart is good for this kind of visualization. So you want to make sure you pick the right visual then after creating your visualizations, you want to make sure you eliminate clutter. Now, basically, what is clutter? Clutter is anything that is not going to add to your analysis or to your data storytelling. It's just there and it tends to end up confusing or tell the story the wrong way. So basically, cluster could be you ch changing the background of your chart. Instead of using a plain white chart, you decide to use something um, with a color, let's say maybe red. And this chart, you're supposed to have like a bar chart on it. So imagine you're adding a red color and you're adding a bar chart that you want people to pay attention to the size of the bar chart to tell that, okay, this um, bar chart, the first chart is showing the top five product, the first product is the top selling product. And you have a, you have a red background, people are going to be focused on the red background even way much more on your data. So anything that you feel is not going to tell your, um, your story, you should just remove this and move on. The next practice is to focus attention. So I think what comes into play in storytelling is focusing attention on what you want your um, audience to pick out. This is where you use your color or you make use of your size. Now, I could decide to if I wanted to draw color to size in this particular image, imagine me making this size, um, giving this size a very bright color. Let's say I give this size a dark blue or a shiny blue color. Immediately I switch to this slide, the first thing you're going to pick out your eyes is going to be this size. Or imagine me deciding to make this size in a bigger font. The first thing you're drawn to is this size. So when you have, let's say you have a very no, let's say you have a number that you want to tell your stakeholder that, okay, the top selling product is this with sales of about, let's say, 4 million. You want to tell them this. You might want to show, um, you might want to make the product and the number stand out by making it bold or by using a color. Anyone would do. Or you can decide to go for both. Now, there's one thing I'll always say, proper alignment and distribution. Now, I'm going to show you what I mean by proper alignment and distribution. I'm going to try to create charts and structure them in the format of a dashboard to show you how alignment and distribution comes into play. So let me go to Power BI and show you what I mean. So I'm going to still be using the HR data to show you that. So moving on to Power BI, I want to create a card visual showing the total employees in the company. So I'm going to make this a little bit smaller in size. So I'm going to come to my HR data. I would select what I want to show the total employees. So I'm going to select the name and I'll get the first name. I'll come down to this drop down and select the count. So I'm not going to select the count distinct because I've already um, eliminated duplicates as well. So I'm just going to be counting just, just the count. So I can see that the total customers is 943, but this my, my title is not really descriptive enough. So I'll go and format that. I'll just come over to format your visual. 
the category label which is on, I'll turn that off. So you just see the number. Then I'll come to general, my title, I'll turn it on. And I'm going to add in a text of total, total employees. I'm going to increase the font size of that so it's clearly, I'll just leave it at 20. I'm going to center align it and so my total employees is 943. Let's just get that. So I'm going to duplicate this. I want to get the total, what is the total count of, like what's the total number of departments in this company? I want to get the total number of departments. So I'm just showing this, I'm just showing some metrics, just answering some questions. These are some of the questions you can start off with, some simple basic questions like, what is the total employees in this data set? You show this with a card visual. What is the total uh, departments in this gender? So I want to have the same size. So I'm going to later emphasize on this more, but you need to have, your card visuals have to be of the same size. Consistency matters. So I'm just going to just create a copy of this. I'll select this and Control C. I've, I've done that and I'm going to do Control V. Once I make Control V, you see a copy mix and then I drag it out. And I place it right next. So I can edit this com um, this new card visual because I want something else. So I'll just remove this and put the total number of, say, let's say gender first, gender. And then I'm going to make count distinct of gender. Now I'm making a count distinct of gender because in this data set, more than one, you could come across an employee with male, female, come across another male, female. So I want just the distinct count, which is three, which is female, male, and non-binary. So I'm going to change the title of this as well, I'm going to general. The title will be changed to what? To be gender. So there are three gender, or gender type, three gender type, or the gender type. So I'm going to make a copy of this as well. So I'm going to just make two copies now. Control C, Control V. Just normal Control C and Control V we do. So I'm going to make another one right now. Control C, Control V. I'm just going to make. So this is where it comes. And I see my canvas doesn't have room for more. And I want to add another card visual and I want to space. So I'm just going to select on the canvas, not the card visual, I'm selecting the canvas. And then I move to my format and canvas settings. I'm going to see the type. So this is showing me 16 ratio nine. I'm just going to come here and select a custom. So a custom is, the size that I can select myself. I can decide to change the size. So selecting a custom, I get this. So I want to increase the width. So I'm just going to make this, let's say, let's start with 2000. I can change it. So I'm just going to leave 2000 for now. So once I do this 2000, this is it now. I'm just going to go to the view tab, page view. I'm going to say fit to width. So everything, wait, that's not selected. Fit width, okay, this, this works. I want to increase the size. This is not bold enough. I'm just going to... So I have the gender, I have the total employees. I'm just going to change this to departments. I'll just do that quick. 
count this thing so there are 12 departments i'm doing the same thing i'm formatting the title so i'm just going to change this to department I think that works. So I want to add, um, since this is a, let's say I want to get the average salary. What is the average salary that an employee in this company is going to earn? I want to add that. So the average salary, I'm going to get it by, okay, let's go back to this pane. I'll remove the count of gender. So I have a blank card with shop. Select salary, drag and drop. Yeah, I'm going to select average. So this means the average salary is 73,000 73, naira, and then this is just like, yes. So I'm just going to do this. So I think the pressure is even, let's see if it can be made bold. Other than this. I just want it to be clear. On your screens I'm just going to come here to undo this so it all has the same size I don't want to mess with that I just did the exact same thing I didn't want to do so I'm going to show you how I'm going to align all of this together at the top let's say I want this here You can even see Power BI giving me a red line to try to, try to help me arrange this data. Arrange the card visuals, I mean, up on the top. So I'm going to select this, holding on my shift key, I'll select the gender, select the department, select the gender type. And coming to format, under align, you see so many options. You can align to the left, align to the center, right, top, middle. So I'm going to align to the top because I want everything on the same level ground. So I'm just going to click align to the top. And once I do that, this gender type moves up. So say I want everything to be equally distributed. I'm going to come to same align under the format. When I select it now, choose distribute horizontally. And there will be a... There'll be the same number of like space between all my visuals. Now I think this visual size is a little bigger than the first one, so I'm just going to come here to general properties 226 250. So I can come here and change that 226. I can make this 250. That's what I want. So basically, this is how you need to make sure everything is aligned total employees so that everything is aligned to the let me show you the end of this is aligned to this all the numbers are on the same if you take a straight line under this they are all aligned to each other so it's just i'm just going to reduce this size a little bit the canvas background that was going to be a little bit too much one four. So this is better. This is clear enough. So I want to edit. Okay, so this is clear enough. So um, we have three questions we are going to answer from this data. We're just starting off trying to answer questions with this data. We have a question asking us, what is the gender distribution in the organization? So to show the distribution in percentages, we want to show the gender distribution. We want to show how many male, female, and non-binary do we have. I'm just going to select a do not chart. And I want to increase my canvas. It's, I want to increase the height of this. It's not, so this is what I'll increase to, let's say, 2,000. So that I can place this put that properly. So 
So I'm going to select the gender on the legend and I'll select the same gender at values. So I'm just going to change this color a little bit. I don't want, I, I'm not really a great designer, so I tend to stick with just one color and mess around with the grays. So I feel like that's a very safe option. So I'm going to pick a dark color for my, for female. And then for non-binary, I'll pick a lighter shade as well. So it looks better. So this is just what I'm going to do. I will also edit the title as well. I could, I'll come here and edit the title. to gender distribution. And I can increase the font size. Let's make it 25. The placement of your, um, my, What they call this? My legend. The placement of okay. I can. I noticed that my uh, my data labels are a little bit small in size, so they are barely readable. So I can go ahead to increase that under my detail labels. So this is on. So I'll come here. I'm going to scroll down. I'm going to see values. I'm seeing a font size of nine. I'll decrease this. Let's say fifteen. And I think that's visible enough. Or I could go for a twenty. I want it to be very clear. So I go for a 20. That's. So let's see. So the next question I'll try to answer, I'm trying to answer, this is our, um, how you, you start out with just answering the most basic questions before you move on to advanced questions. So next question is, Distill these to regions and departments. So this is the gender distribution of the old employee. Like this is the gender distribution without filtering to a particular location, without saying what is the gender distribution of employees in Abuja. So I the question is to distill this. So I'm going to go ahead and create a slicer. So I want to use this shape here. I want to give it a curve, nice to curve. So I'll come to the style. Mm, no, I'll come to shape rather. Come to shape, and I'm going to increase the rounded corners to so let's say 18, and to a little rounded. And I think this is good enough for this. So I leave it like this. So I'm going to insert slicers. So to insert a slicer, I'll go to my insert tab. And you know, I'm going to go to my visualizations rather to so slicer. Now, I earlier discussed that slicers come in list or drop down. You can decide how you want it to be. I'm going to select this and take this off. I want to place my slicer in this shape. I want it inside the shape. I'm just going to make the shape a little bit wider. Just a little bit. So I can increase my slicer as well. So I'm going to, I was asked to distill this to regions and departments. So I'm just going to bring my regions, which is the location. My slider pops up here with the location. I'm going to give it like let's see a dark a dark background because when I tap on this, it doesn't seem to have any fill. So I will just go back to the slider and give it like a dark background. So I'm coming to generals. Okay, so I'm being asked to zoom in, so I think. So I'm working on this shape right now. So this is the slicer right here. And I selected the slicer because I don't like, there's no background here. So I'm selecting it 
to add a dark background, not a background, rather a border. I just want to add a border to it. I want to define the shape. So I'm adding a border. So I'm coming to general effects and I'm going to see a visual border. I'll turn it on. And the color is, what's the color? The color is dark. I'm going to look at it. I think this works, so I'm going to leave the dark color. So this um this slicer is a list. I can come here to decide to change it to a drop down. This is a drop down now. A drop down is just I choose to drop it down and pick. But I want it to be a list just for now. So I can decide to bring this slicer to the front. So it's always on the shape so it doesn't get lost. So to bring this slicer to the front of the shape, I will select the slicer. So you can see selected now. Then I'll go to my format. I'll see bring forward. So I'll just select bring forward or bring to front. I'll just say bring to front. So this is it. So I'm going to duplicate this control C and paste that control V. So I have a copy of this. So I want to create another for department. So I'm going to place that underneath it. So instead of location, I would remove location and place department. Okay, where did that go? Place department. So I have department here. I'm just going to drag this down. So. I'm going to drag this down. List. So this is a little bit longer. So I'm going to do this. So I'll increase the length of my shape. Okay, I'm going to zoom out now a little bit so you can see that. So you can clearly see the slicer. So I'm just going to align this. I'm going to select this shape. So I'm going to just drag it to align it to the top of this card visuals. So I'm going to align it there. So I can take this a little bit up and take this a little bit up as well. Okay. So you can note you notice that I told you slicers I used to filter through. So if I select a particular location, my pie chart is automatically going to change in value. So let me show you the values we have. We have 49.2% for meals. So when I select Abuja, we have 47.45% meals in Abuja location. So that's just what slicers do. So if um the audience wants to interact with it, want to know, okay, what is the gender distribution based in a particular department, say legal department, you will just be able to filter easily. So I'm going to modify this pie chart. I'm going to just, I don't want the values as four points, something, I just want it to be rounded up so it's readable. So I'm going to come to format your visual, detail labels, then I'm going to see label content, okay? Then the values under. When I see the values, I'll see value decimal places. So I'll come to reduce it zero. Percentage decimal places should be zero. So automatically 47, 40. Nine for going to give me hundred percent of the gender distribution. So the next thing to do is I'm just going to zoom out a little bit so you can see what we have here for now. I'll zoom back in. 
a scroll so that you can see clearly. So I'm going to, um, the next question is to show insights on ratings based on gender. So I don't know if I should go back this again because I went over this yesterday where we created a sort table to show insights on ratings. So I'm going to pick the, I picked a stacked bar chart so that's why I'm selecting again. I'm going to move this to where I want it to be, which is here. I'll just create it. I'm going to figure out where I place it later on. So sometimes when creating visuals, you already know the questions, you already know the charts you're going to use for it. Um, after going through it and analysis, you design like a layout, maybe on a sheet of paper of where you think you're going to place everything out. So, so when you're when you're doing it, you're just placing it. So right now I'm going to create a stack bar chart showing the ratings based on gender. So I want to see the gender and distribution of the ratings. So I'll pick gender. And I'm going to pick ratings for my exercise, which is going to show me the count. And then for the sort, I'm going to choose the ratings on the sort table. So I'm going to change the colors as well. I'm going to come to my format, my visual, come to my bars where I see colors. So the first one, which is not rated, I'll change the color to a deep blue. Then, okay, no, I'm just, I'm going to filter first. Let me remove not rated. I don't need not rated, okay? Let me change very good to the deep blue. Good is a lighter shade of blue. This is like a diverging palette. Average, I'm just going to choose this. Poor, I'm going to choose a red color. Very poor, I'm going to choose darker shade of red, let's see. So I want to remove the, let's say the, my, I just want to show the gender by ratings. I don't want to show where ratings were not given, not rated. So I'm just, just going to come over to filter Spain. And I want to filter what, I want to filter the ratings. So I'll just select the ratings. So I'm selecting the drop down of ratings. And I'm going to select all, but I'll unselect not rated. I don't want to be not rated. So once I do that, automatically my ratings is not rated. So I'm going to show the data labels. Going to format your visual data labels. I'll turn that on. So I'm also going to increase the size because it's small and not clearly visible. So I'll come to the values and increase the size to, I uh, can increase the other to 20. So I'll just stick to the 20 for everything. And I'll change the color to a dark black. I'm also going to round off the values. I don't want, I want it to be, so the value decimal places, I'm going to take it down to zero. So I have everything rounded off. So I'm going to place this. Let's see. I'm going to pull this a little bit. So I am going to, so I've answered the question of the gender distribution. Let me zoom in. Let me zoom in so you can see this clearly. Page view, page, page, you know. 
actual size. Maybe this will help. So I've answered the question for the gender distribution. And I've been able to show the gender by ratings. So by the gender by ratings, you can tell that male were rated least in a very good category and female were, were rated least in the, this is going to show what I'm saying correct, correctly. Let me just zoom out. So basically, I'm just creating a visual to answer three questions. So I've answered the gender distribution, show the gender by distribution. So I can show the gender by distribution. Distilled to location and department, I've been able to show how you can select and easily filter for each location and department. And now show the gender, show the gender, um, the ratings by gender. I've shown this. So the last question is to is what is the average salary for each gender? So to show the average salary for each gender, I might go to chart to be a bar chart because gender is a categorical variable. So I would go to a bar chart. I'm going to just select, let me just select a standard bar or column chart. So I'm going to move it. Look at where it's going to. So this is this. I'm going to move it. So I'm going to select the gender on my x-axis because I want to see the average salary gotten by each gender in this company. The average salary gotten by each person in this. So I'm going to select salary to my y-axis. And this is just showing me the sum of salary, not the average. I want to check the average sum. So I'm going to select average. So I'm going to change the color for that as well i'll go to my columns and just select the same blue color and i'm going to show coming to general or visual rather we're going to go to our data labels we want to see the numbers we want to know we don't just want to use the y-axis want the numbers so you can stick with just the Y, or you might want to add the numbers if you want. So I'm going to turn off the Y labels. 20 um, font size, the font size 20 for this label. I'm going to stick with that as well here. So I'm just going to select the values and I'll make the font size 20 as well. So that's it, um, that's clearer. So, just going to fit that to this end. I'm going to drag this chart and align that. So Power BI automatically provides this alignment. Like this red line you see, it's automatically trying to align it automatically. So I'm going to zoom out a little bit. So I can, this, there's still a lot of space here in the background I don't need. So I'll just tap on my canvas and remove that. So the height is too long. So I want to reduce the height. So the height is 2,000 years. So I'll just, this is just a few. So I'll try one eight. And it's still long. So I'll just try, let's say one five. One five is, so let's try one four then. So I'm just going to set it for one four fifty, and I don't know why I added here. Okay. So um, let me try it. So okay, I think this works. Can you show?
okay, okay. There's one thing we notice when we zoom in. Let me just try to zoom in and show you something. So zooming in, I see that my labels are clearly visible, but my legend is not visible enough. So I have to increase the font size of this. So I'm going to increase the font size of my label. So coming to canvas settings, no, not canvas settings, sorry. I have to select this chart and come to detail labels. Rather the legend, I mean, come to the legend, the text. So I'm just going to increase this to be clearly visible. So I'm just going to set it for 15. And then I'll apply the same 15 here as well. So yeah, it's going to be applied. This is my X, X, um, X values. So yeah, it's going to apply on the X axis. Yeah, this is my legend. So I applied it on my legend. So yeah, I'm applying it on my X axis. So I'll come to my exercises and change that font size to so non-binary male and female get clear. And then I'm going to turn off. Okay. Okay. So I'm just going to change this title. So this is saying average of salary by gender. I just want to say the average salary gotten by each gender. So, so I can go to my general title, so just the same thing I've been doing, and change it to select this one. A average salary by gender type. So I can make this bold. I've been using the 25. I've been using 25 for this. I'm going to stick with 25. Since I can tell this is the average salary by gender type, and we can tell male and female is gender, and these are obviously the average salaries. So I'm going to be turning off my Y axis label and my X axis label. They are not necessary. So this is part of what I call cluster. This is not necessarily needed, it's just going to add too much. If your, your title is already descriptive enough, you don't necessarily need this. So I'm just going to go to my formatting my visual. Under the X axis, I'll turn off the title. Then I'll repeat the same for the Y. I'll turn off the title. So since I have these values already, I can decide to turn off the y values as well. So I'm going to just turn off the y values because I can already tell by the data label here. And I think that's okay for me here. So I'll just turn off my y values here. So y axis, I'll turn it off. So I'm just going to make, uh, why am I moving this? I'm just going to repeat the same for the other. I just made them clearly visible. So I'm going to edit the title of this as well. This is the gender by ratings. Or you can call it anything, how employees were rated, distribution of ratings. Just a written by the gender type. I'm going to increase that to 25. And this is my this is my legend. My legend is looking small, so I'll just increase my legend as well. My visual, I'll see legend on my visual. Then I'm going to go to the text because it's the text I want to be bold. I don't need to make that 15. 15 is clear enough. So I'll turn off the, I'll turn off this gender. I don't need it, I'm just going to turn off that. So I'll go to my Y axis. 
and just turn off the title. I will repeat the same for my exercises. I'll turn off the title as well. And since I have the data labels, which is descriptive, I might not need to make reference to this. So I'm just going to turn everything off on my exercises. I'm going to zoom in so we can see how that looks. So this is just a simple dashboard of an HR data telling you the number of employees, the gender type, the department. Um, okay, I didn't, add, um, okay, let's go back to this. I'm just going to scroll over here. This is supposed to be the average salary for an employee. So I'm going to edit the title. This should be average salary. Average salary. So this is a simple dashboard just showing the gender distribution, the average salary by gender type, and ratings by gender. So this, okay, I didn't turn this, this counts of ratings, I need to turn it off. I don't need that. So I'll turn off my X, my X type to look at it here on, I'll turn it off. So I'm going to align the edge of this with this here. I'm just going to align this, so I'm going to drag it. So it's going to align with that. That's so we can be able to notice Power BI offers you um, interactiveness. If I click on this mail, everything automatically showing me the total employees are mails, which is 464 employees, which is just one gender type. So this is just what's showing me. So I'm going to just tap, click on any way outside to come back. So I can decide to filter here, selecting anything. Okay, I don't want to move this. So I can filter selecting marketing and it's just going to be showing one department. So there are 65 employees in the marketing department and in the marketing department, we can tell that we have 51% males and 48% females. So if we're analyzing these data sets, we can tell that there's one thing that is looking a bit consistent. Let me remove this filter. The average salary gotten by non-binary is 79K. The average salary gotten by male is $75,000 and female is $72,000. So you can see that there seems to be a gender gap or a gender pay gap in this data. So the further analysis can be done on this to identify the gender pay gap. The gender pay gap between um, genders in this in this uh, manufacturing company. So this is just a simple, this data, this is just a simple dashboard. Now I can go ahead to publish that. So once you have your dashboard, you might want to, okay, there are lots of pages in this. There are lots of pages in this, which I created earlier from yesterday's class when we were talking about matrix. I'm just going to close this. I don't want to, I don't want to publish everything. I'm going to have it close that I don't need I'm just going to delete this. Sorry, I should have deleted this earlier. Just to explain. So I'm just deleting all of this. Deleting this one. This one was not the one I want. This. So I'm going to go ahead and go to my file, choose 
publish, no, not publish. I'm going to choose export rather, export to PDF. So you can export a PDF of your report after creating your report, and then you convert to a PNG format, and then you can post online. So I'm just going to show you how this looks like in the full view. So this is your manufacturing group dashboard, just a one-page dashboard to just answer three questions. What is the gender distribution? What is the average salary gotten by each gender type? And what is um, the ratings by... Uh, the ratings by gender type as well. So these are your slicers here, which you can filter. This is a shape which this is a shape which I indicated curved edges and I placed slicers on them. This is your tie tool. So this is your card visuals as well. So the total number. This is just a this is just to get started in and start building visualizations. So you can try recreating this as well. Um, you can try recreating this as well. I don't know what's the time. What's the time we we still have to move on to data modeling, but I don't know how everyone is feeling after this class. I can't tell the mood. So this is just the one page report. So I'm just going to leave you to take it in. So um, I'm just, okay, so the time is 7.03, so I'm just going to see if there's, let's just take one or two questions and then I'm going to move on. So let me just take one or two questions. Okay, I think someone is asking a question. Can you switch the category options for male in front of for male in front for average salary by gender? Okay. Let me just check. So let me just show you what I did with this data set. So this now, this data set is sorted in the standing order of the average salary. So the presentation of your data also matters. So if somebody's taking a look at this visual, they can clearly tell that the gender type that gets the most salary for just a single person, the average salary by gender type goes to the non-binary gender majorly. But we can't really tell this non-binary because this gender type refuse to disclose, but based on our data, this is what it's telling us. So I prefer to just sort this in a descending order type so you can tell this. Remember, I told you this gender is a categorical variable, a nominal categorical variable. It is not ordinal. It does not have inherent ordering. So when it comes to variables that do not have inherent ordering, you choose to sort them in ascending order or descending order. If it was something that had to do with, like, let's say, um, a year, a year type of data, or like look at this, or like ratings now. Ratings have an order to them, like you, you like you rate from one to five, like rate one for let's say just average. So that's why I try to sort this in that order. So for this average salary by gender, I will not be sorting male to come first. You're going to have to sort this by descending order. So I think that answers that question. So, okay, um, Lekoni asked the question. 
if it's possible to do data cleaning on Power BI for a routine data that will be updating periodically on the source file. So when you actually um, query, when you use Power Query to clean your data on Power BI, it doesn't affect your source file. So I don't think um, that is possible. I'm just going to add to that. Power BI doesn't, when you um, get the data into Power BI, it's almost like Power BI is creating a copy of that data in Power BI. So if you are going to update your data in the Excel workbook, it's not going to automatically update in Power BI as well. So I think if you connect to, um, if you connect to, if you make a live connection, this is this is when we talk about game. Um, this is about getting data into Power BI. So next setting when you have data coming in, um, when you have data updating regularly. So once you connect to that, if the, as the data updates, you're just going to refresh. You're going to see where you can have a refresh. You refresh the data. So this is the data when you when you are um, getting your data in from OneDrive. So I don't have much knowledge in that, but if you check on YouTube, you should be able to see something to help you with that. So this is just for locally importing the data set. So this is so basically, if you have a data in Excel sheet and you update it, it's not going to um, reflect in your data table here in Power BI except you want to go ahead and import that new data. I hope that clarifies your question. So the pages, um, let me ask this question. How can you export? Okay, someone is asking, how can you export it and not lose the interactiveness of the dashboard? So this is where you publish. So you can publish your report to the Power BI service. So I explained that a typical workflow in Power BI starts off with you creating a report in the Power BI desktop. And then you come here, you're going to see this publish, which I almost made a mistake before. You're going to just see this publish, and then you publish the web. But I, to publish the web, you need to be signed in. You can see I'm not signed in yet. So I need to sign in and publish the web. Or if I try to publish the web, they're going to ask me to publish the web. You're probably going to give me a pop okay. Let me just save my changes. Let's see. Okay. Enter your email address. So I would have to sign to the web. So you're going to, to get your report to so retain the interactiveness of your report. You're going to publish to your Power BI web. You're going to publish to the web. Then you go on Google Chrome, open your Power BI service. Once your Power BI service is opened, you can generate an embed code. Basically, what an embed code is going to do is going to let you be able to post this dashboard on a website. And once you do this, um, I don't think I have this here, but I posted one of my dashboard on a website, but it's not here. It's on um, it's on it's on my laptop that got this. In. So I've just so if I had that, I would have been able to show you that. So I posted one, which can which can clearly show you the interactiveness. So once you get, once you publish the Power BI service, basically, you can get an embed code and be able to publish this in the website. You can also be able to share your report to someone via mail, like share report, and they'll be able to view your report just clicking it open, and they'll be able to view your report. I don't know if that answers well, but basically, to retain the interactiveness, the interactiveness of your dashboard, you have to publish the Power BI service first, and then you get your report, you're going to get like an embed code to share that. So probably because of this question, I'm going to show you guys how to do that when I work on a case study. So when I work on a case study with you, I'm going to publish to Power BI service and show you how to get a link, show you how to maybe embed that as well, show you how to get a link that you can share with people um, interactively. Just get a new page, insert tab, and then you see a text box. So this is the text box here. So you just decide to enlarge it to fit whatever width you want. Then you can come to this drop down and increase the font as large as you want. Then I'm just going to type in Palmorial using my keyboard or whatever I want to enter it. So basically that's how I got the text box. So this is the text box. So I can make it big, I can make it like this is just the text box. So I went to the insert tab and I inserted a text box, which is under elements, which is what we started discussing today. I'm just going to remove this and delete this. So, OK. 
Okay. Um, I think there is another question saying, is it a must to delete some of the pages before posting the dashboard? Now, what I did earlier starting out was basically kind of like, and um, should I call it exploratory analysis? So basically when you start off answering questions, you might start off as a beginner, you don't know where to start off from. You might start off just answering simple questions, just getting a feel of your data set. So once you're doing this, you're creating different reports. And why I created several pages was because I wanted it to be clear the other day. I wanted it to be clear so everybody could see it clearly so I could zoom in. So I wanted, so that's why I was creating each visual on a new page. But you can also create each visual on a new page once you're just trying to get a feel of, okay, what can I show? So you're going to have so many charts you might create, but you're only going to share just the ones that tell the stories. So you know some of the charts that, 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 that can solve the problem you're trying to solve. So those are the ones you're going to share. You're not going to share something that is not going to be helpful to the problem. If you're talking about A, you're just going to discuss about A. You're not going to say something else. Um, please, I think someone is asking, like, that is zooming on the page. Okay, let me see. This is just it. Okay, I think the question is, how did I zoom in on the page? So at the right hand side, you're going to clearly see this. So you're going to see a zoom menu. You can see fit to page. I select fit to page, then it automatically fits to page. So this is going to help you. You're going to see where you can scroll to zoom in as you want and to reduce your zoom as well. Also, you can also go to the view tab. You're going to see your page view and you can fit to width. You're going to fit your dashboard inside just width. So you just need to scroll down to, to look at the rest. Or you can select the actual size. It's going to show you the actual size, which is this. I'm just going to select fit to width so I can see everything in the width. So let's move on to the next. I know this has been a lot to take in, but the time and practice you get it. So let's just move on to the next topic. Okay. So, okay. Now, bad data visualization, the mistakes to avoid here, you need to be wary of distracting images. Now, Using a distracting image could be, you could see my dashboard, the background of my dashboard is white. I could decide to say I use an image of, let's say, telling you. So even when you're a pupil, you need to make sure that it is not distracting, it is needed. Then I'm going to go to the poor choice of colors when you use too many colors in your dashboard. And at most, I think you should, use as um, at most three or four colors in your dashboard and you should make sure you select this color as well. So I can't speak really well on this because I'm not a very good design. I don't have a very good use of colors. So I tend to just limit it to just a few colors. I'm still trying to get a, um, a grasp of that. Also visualizing data to an unsuitable or incorrect visualization format. This is what I talked about when I said you use a line chart when you have to use a line chart. So use of 3D visuals, you don't want to use 3D visuals. 3D visuals are not going to add anything to your data. Instead, they're going to take everything from it, every bit of understanding someone can grasp. I wish I came with an image here to show you how 3D visual can be quite distracting, distracting rather. So I'm just going to share you um, my the very first dashboard that I made. So you can see this dashboard now. And one thing you can tell from this dashboard, starting, if you can see this is the title, so it's a superstar sales dashboard. You can see I have card visuals lined up here. For someone like me now, if I'm looking at this, I'm just going to look at the fact that, oh, why are the card visuals different sizes? Is this telling me something? Why is this not the same size? So this is where I entered that consistency. So you might want to make your card visuals the same size 
also the colors i made use of a lot of colors that i don't know i don't particularly find them looking at them i don't particularly find them um, comfortable to look at when you come down to the subcategory you see a bar chart that's tending to go backward which is just for sales so power bi offers you a way to format your sales when it's lost so this is in depth you're just going to this is in depth you're going to be able to format this to be a color let's see your profit you use green and for your um, loss you use like a red color so basically what i would say i got right in these visuals is i got the alignment correct everything is aligned to the top everything is aligned properly and i got the um, distribution evenly i was able to distribute evenly i was able to highlight the products that were performing well the products that were generating more profits and cities where the most profit came from i and then i was able to just show the total number of customers total number of sales and profits so i think i got this right but then the choice so let's let me show you when i posted this online i got feedbacks from some very experienced people and i worked on it so this is what i came up with so why this is not perfect and you can still tell you can tell that the colors is minimized a little bit and i just tried to highlight the first bar and i was able to provide a recommendation based on what i did one thing i would still say i don't um one thing i would still say needs work on this dashboard is the use of colors here yeah. there was no need for me to use this purple color i was just being trying to be a, what a, should I call myself a graphic artist or what? There was no need for this. This is even going to make someone think how the pop will come into play in all this. So I should have just been consistent with the colors. Also, one thing I think I took notes from the corrections was I replaced this card visuals were aligned here and I just decided to place them on top. So I don't know what is the, I think you can place your bar, you can place your card visuals at the side or on top, but I prefer mine on top right now. The only thing I would advise is to make this color a bit consistent all through. So look at where I tried to highlight that a product produces two times the profit generated from the sale of other products. So I wanted to emphasize that two times, just selling one product will give you the profit two times selling another, profit, uh, another product is going to generate. So that's what I wanted to just recommend. So the data set was a very large one. I was just, I was just, I was just starting out as well. So moving on, this is a very, uh, a recent project I worked on last, last month. I think, I think this is not clear enough. I'm just going to switch over. So this is a dashboard I made for a sentiment analysis project I did on Beyonce's new newly released album Renaissance. So this I got the data using Python and I created this dashboard using Power BI. From start to finish, everything was done in Power BI. Because this data set is a Twitter data set, and I wanted to give my view uh, my audience a a sort of like an interaction with the data. I wanted them to be able to easily understand. I imported in some shapes or some icons. As you can see, you can see likes. So when you're on Twitter, you see this little likes and retweet icon. So I wanted to give that similarity and a bit of um, familiarity with the data. So I was able to select a color that would contrast well. I selected this yellow because I knew it was going to contrast well with black and it was going to be able, I was going to be able to see it clearly. And I also in, um, included also, I included here, you can see these are icons I uh, imported. So these are icons and this is a line chart. This is a, no, this is a shape rather. So I, I imported this line shape to kind of demarcate, to create, so it's not be a lot to take in. You either use space so you don't overwhelm, so you don't cluster your chart together. You use space or you use a, a, a border. So I was going for um, a nice view. So I just used this line chart to demarcate. And when I wanted to show the tweet by time, I I had to sort that. I don't I don't know if I can zoom in a little bit. I don't think I had to sort that in from 12 a.m. to 11 p.m. I had to sort that in the right time. Time starts from 12 a.m. to 11 p.m. So I sorted that out right. 
So this was just a simple. So what I was going for, I was going for an album cover initially, but I had so many insights I wanted to show. So it ended up being a very long album cover. It was supposed to just be a short album cover and just small. So it doesn't really pass across. But I was going for an album cover with a disc popping out. So that was it I was going for. I didn't really get it to. So this is just these are just text box I indicated here. And then I reduced the font size of the text box based on the table, based on the table of my data. And my table of data I had vocals with more tweets than lyrics, than production and the rest. So I'm just showing you, like, I'm just showing you a bit of data uh, of what Power BI can do. So if you understand how to use Power BI, you can create a very, um, you can create visuals using Power BI. You don't need to necessarily learn, go to another software. You can be able to use Power BI as well. Now this also here is, um, this also is a slide that you can use it to filter the date by the date as well. So this was where I was trying to emphasize using color. So I wanted them to know the most popular track. So for this dashboard, what I was going for was I wanted to know what time the album performed well, and I wanted to know the most popular track. So as Beyonce as an artist, you might want to know, okay, from my album that I released, what tracks do my fans on Twitter, what tracks do they really love the most? So I wanted to know that. And I wanted to know where her fans came from majorly. So I think that's, um, I think we've discussed that enough. Let's move on to, I think we've discussed visualizations. So let's just, let me just move on. So visualization is something you're going to keep learning, storytelling with data, how to communicate. So I'm going to be recommending this book to anyone to take, to start reading. So it's going to help you when I realized, when I started out as well, and still now, I still consult this book to go through it because I'm not a very good data storyteller as well. I just keep practicing and we'll all get there. So I'll always recommend you read this book. Um, I think the writer, the data analyst, I think she did a very good job with this book as well. So you can go through this to learn when to use which chart, when not to use which chart. So this book is going to come in handy. So you can start reading this book in preparation for creating visuals ahead. So let's head off to um, let's head off to today's topic. Today's topic of the day. Uh, no, today's topic was actually visualizations and a little bit of data modeling. So let's just head into data modeling now. We've been hearing data modeling, data modeling. Data modeling is, in the most basic term, data modeling is just creating relationships between two tables. Data modeling is the process of organizing the different data your business collects by establishing relationships between each data table. Let me see if I can get this. Basically, you're just establishing relationship between each data table. And I'm going to show you this in, I'm going to show you this in Power BI. But well, first of all, let's understand, which establishing relationship between each data table. What is a data table? Data table is divided into fact table and dimension tables. So fact table contains event data values such as your sales, your prices, your transaction dates, and time. Basically, your fact table contains repeated values, values that are repeated, like someone is going to come and buy an item, you're going to have a sales record, you're going to have a, a new transaction date. While your dimension table just contains details or descriptions about the fact table. Say you sell coffee every day, your dimension table might just contain the other type of your coffee or the size type of your coffee. Let's say small, medium, large, and just the unit price of a small, medium, and large. So it only contains unique values, your dimension table. Now, why do we need to know all of this? We need to know both of these because when we get to data modeling, we're going to be connecting our fact, our fact table to our dimension table. So we need to know what our fact table is and what our dimension table is. So the most simplest way to understand this is your fact table is always going to be that table that is 
quite large because it contains repeated values. Or your dimension table is almost like a lookup table, if you know Excel. It's almost like a lookup table. Let's say you have, let me use this instance. Let's say you have a table containing the sales and you have different locations. People that are buying your products are coming from, are imputing different country codes. Let's say someone is imputing the country code of um, Nigeria, let's say NG or NGR, and that person is imputing the country code of USA. These values are going to be repeating, repeating, USA, 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 USA. And you want to be able to get the full country names. In Excel, you can just create like a VLOOKUP to look up this country code in another table. But in Power BI, what you're going to do is you're going to connect these two tables. You're going to establish a, a relationship based on a common a common column or a common key that these two tables have. When we go into Power BI, we'll see how to establish relationships. Now, there are basically four relationships, or this is called cardinality, that Power BI creates. It creates a one-to-many relationship, a many-to-one, a one-to-one, -one, and a many-to-many. So I said dimension contains only um, values that are unique, while fact table contains continuous value. So I think it's time to, okay, let's know why we, why do we even create a data model, first of all? When we delve deep, I think we're going to be understanding what I mean by it reduces poor performance and data modeling reduces poor performance. It's just, imagine you have a very large data table and you load it into Power BI. The table contains, say, 20 columns and you're querying for a table. Let's say you're querying for location. You want to get the location. For Power BI to extract that location, it's going to take time to load because the table contains so many values. Now, imagine that this table that's containing 20 columns is broken down into several tables that are connected. Power BI is just going to only connect to the table it wants the location from, which is a single table that might just contain two col three columns or and few rows of data. So when you create a data uh, model, data exploration is faster. Uh, aggregation of data is also simpler. Now, aggregation of data is basically you summarizing your data. The main aim of data analysis is to get, is to summarize our data, is to generate insights, is to get what is the total salary, what is the sum, what is the average salary. So we are basically aggregating our data. So when you create a data model, you are able to aggregate data simpler using you, you, you can be able to create, you start creating DAX measures, you start talking about creating uh, measures and calculated columns and the like. Now, there are two types of data model. We have the star schema and we have the snowflake. The star schema is basically a star, a star shaped data model. It's not really star shaped, it's just your data tables are, are arranged in the form of stars. So, let me just show you what it is like. So basically, you have your, this is your fact table. Now, I said your fact is the table that contains what? It contains repeated values. And then you have your dimension tables surrounding. So this is just how you arrange your data tables in your data modeling. And this is what we call a star schema. So basically, when you arrange this in this form, you're just arranging your data around the fact table, this is just, and then you're going to establish relationships. So let's head off to Power BI and let's explain that. Let's head off to Power BI. And let's talk about, let's, let's get to know data modeling in Power BI apart from just the theory part. So I'm just going to come here and close this. I'm going to wait for that to open and then I'm going to just show you how you create a data model. So I'm going to go to my file. Okay, I'll close the little, little pop-up box. So I'm just using a
I'm not going to get the data set and not show you what data modeling is, but once we're going through our case study, we'll go over this whole process from start to finish, from getting the data, from cleaning the data, and actually creating relationships. So I'm just going to come over to here, get data from an Excel workbook, and I'm going to select the Power BI. So I've selected my Excel workbook, the pop-up box, the navigator window is going to open. So this is my um, Excel file containing this four sheets, inventory, product, sales, and stories, and stores rather. So I'm just going to select all of these tables because I want all of these tables in my data. And I'm just going to load it. I'm not transforming today because I'm just trying to show you what data modeling is about. So I'm going to click on load. So a typical workflow will be getting your data in, transforming your data using Power Query, then modeling your data in the model view. So you might you want to do that. So when once we start our case study, we're going to go through the typical workflow. But since we already have an idea about data cleaning, we'll just go on to so the data set is loading in. Okay, once that loads, we're going to see the data cells in our feed spin. So we're seeing the four data tables. Now I said Power BI offers three views, and I'm going to go to the data model. Once I go here, I'm going to see tables, my tables here. So I'm just going to reduce this zoom size a little bit so we can see everything. So I'm going to bring this to the front. So once you over around it, you, you see this arrow and you can be able to drag it to wherever you want it to be. I'm just going to be dragging this. So basically what I'm trying to do now is I'm trying to create a star schema. It's not necessary, it doesn't necessarily have to exactly be a, a star shape, but basically what it means is your, your fact table should be centered. Your fact table should be here and then your dimension table should be surrounding it. So basically, how do you tell, how can you tell your fact table? Let's come to our data set and get, let's understand that. Let's, let's, we just came in with this data set. Let's just go very blank. We imported our data. We want to know which is our fact table and which is our dimension table. So we come to, this is where we were, where we imported in our data. Then we come to our data table and we have a feel of our data. So we are, in, we are looking at the inventory data now. So we can see the store ID, the product ID, and the stock on and. So this doesn't look like, this is this is just saying for each product ID of 28, we just have 10 stocks of product ID 28. So if the product ID is like, let's say a toy or an, an electronics device, we just have 10 stock on and. So this is not saying, this is just giving us an attribute. This is not a continuous. So this is a dimension table. So I'm going to move to the next, which is product. So for our products as well, we can see a product name, we can see a product category, um, but is any of this telling us about events that happens? Any of this telling us that, okay, sales happened, this is not telling us, giving us an event data. So this is still a dimension table and not a fact table. So this is still a dimension table. So this is just telling us each product. This is not giving us, this is just an attribute. This is just telling us that for a product name of action figure, toys, this is just the product cost and the product price. This is the amount you buy it and this is the amount you sell it. So I'm going to go to my sales. Now for my sales, you already see a transaction date saying that this, at this date, Sunday, 1st January, we sold product ID 8. We sold one unit. 
this is giving us an event. This is telling us, this is giving us an event that at a particular date, this happened. This is an event data. This is a sales data. So basically, your data about sales and an event data is a fact table. So we know our inventory and our products are dimension tables, and this is our fact table. We come to the stores, we get a feel of the stores. So this is just telling us the day our store was opened, and attributes of the store. The store was opened this day. The store location is this. The store city is this. So this is not, this is just, if you look at this also, you're not seeing. Let's come to these sales now. When you come to these sales, you can see you can see repeated values. You can see product ID eight um, was gotten more than once. You can see repeated values here. When you come to these stores, you can't see repeated values. You're only seeing Maven Toys one, Maven Toys whatever this is two. So these are not repeated values. So repeated values, which is sales, are your fact table. And non repeated values, which are unique values, are your dimension tables. So your fact table is always at the center of your data modeling, which is this. And your dimension tables are centered around it in form of a star, star, star shaped. Now we can see all these tables, but we can also see all these lines showing you what, showing you a connection. Now Power BI automatically detects connection based on the columns. So you can see this product ID, product ID. When you over around it, you can see the connection. Now we can go ahead and delete this. I'm just going to, uh, I'm just going to come, let me, let me start off with this product ID. I'm just going to, I'm going to right click and delete. I'm going to delete this relationship first and show you how you create a relationship yourself. Now, you can either choose to go ahead with this, which probably has already detected for you, which is fine and okay, or you can decide to just delete this and say you want to repeat the process. So this relationship has been deleted. Now, how do you connect relationship? You connect relationship based on similar keys in your data set. So I have a product ID and a product ID. So this is basically like Excel in a way. Excel, you look up a value. In another sheet, you look up the value that's in this column, look up this value in this column. If you find this value, return return me this value. So basically, you're just going to use this product ID to connect with this. So to create relationship, you either drag this, I'm just picking this, and I'm going to place it on my product ID. So once I do that, the relationship is automatically created. Now you're going to see this sign here. You're seeing a little number one. I don't know if this is clear enough. Let's see. I don't think there's any way. You can zoom this. You can see this little number one here, and you can see this star. This star represents many. This one is one. So when we're talking about one to many relationship now, I said the sales table contains repeated values. So this is your many. This is the product ID only contain like unique values. So one to many, your dimension table one to your fact table many. So this is what you get here as well. You see your one to many. So if you feel like Power BI has detected the wrong relationship, you can delete it. Now I'm just going to show you the properties of this relationship. So I'm going to right click and I'm going to show you properties. So once we do this, you can see the relationship, the properties table pop up. So this is showing us that these are the tables, this is the sales table, and this is the products table. You can see this highlighted in gray and in gray. So these are the two columns that are used to establish a relationship, the product ID and this product ID as well. And the cardinality of the relationship is many to one, many from the sales to one. So this is just showing you this as well. This is just basically, I just wanted to show you this. So this is just the properties. There's not much here. So basically, for most of the time, Power BI is going to detect relationship, except your column names are not exactly the same. Let's say we have this as product ID, and we have this as just ID. Power BI might not detect that, and you would have to just come and create the relationship yourself. 
or your data types are not the same. The data type of this product ID, let's say it's number, and the data type of this product ID is text. Power BI cannot will not be able to do that. So once you're cleaning your data, you have to select the right data types. I'm just going to go to um let's head up to the slides now. This is just basically what data modeling is. Once we start talking about and uh, once we start our case study and dealing with DAX, and we're going to do by creating these relationships between table comes in handy. So things are tall. So I'm just going to take a QA. This is a QA session. So I'm just going to take some questions now. Okay, so guys, if you have any questions, now is the time to drop them in the chat box. So I'm seeing from the comment section as well that um, you're requesting for a day break. So um, initially, we're going to start working on the case study from tomorrow. So she would go through our own case study, just show you how to do a case study, and then we'll give you one that will, will enable you and that you can add to your portfolio as well. So um, maybe we'll put out a poll in the Telegram group to know if um, a day break, but we're trying to cover a lot in that 10 days. So um, I don't know if that um, day break will be possible, but we'll look into it. So if you have any questions, you can just ask. We have about 15 minutes left before the end of this class, so we can just um, answer the um, questions. Okay. So I'm... Um, the HR data was already shared earlier. This data set that I used to create this data modeling relationship is the data set of the case study that I'm going to work on. So I'm just trying to show you an intro to what data modeling is. But once I start working on that case study, I'm going to go through everything from the top, from getting data from the workbook to cleaning it, to modeling, to starting to, to start to analyze and start creating visuals. So I'm not going to be sharing this case study yet. We're going to go over that from top to end. I'm not going to go over this. I'm not going to be sharing this for now. But you can work on the HR data set and practice your data visualization skills and go over reading the book to get familiar. So even though this is a 10 days, it's still better you learn. So we're going to definitely consider um, discussion in the chat box about taking a day off to assimilate everything. Because everybody needs break, um, but you know, be firewood. So just we're going to consider that as well and see if we can include that. If we're going to just take a, a, a day off to assimilate everything and to practice on all that we've been teaching, so that can catch up as well. So if you have any other questions, just drop in the chat box so I can answer that and we can all move on with. Uh, other daily activities. So the data visualization we did today, this is still, that was the data set we shared. Writing, I think we shared that on the Telegram group, right? Yeah. So the data visualization that we did today, I've shared the data set. That was the data set we used to practice data cleaning. So we use that to practice getting a data set into Power BI and data profiling and data cleaning. And I just created a basic dashboard of it. So... So I think that I think that's all for today. I think that's all for today, right? In presence of no questions, uh, I'm just going to end up this class today, and I'm, we're going to get back to you guys in the Telegram group. So just keep 
think that we are going to update on the decision we, we decided to take. We're taking a break of one day. So thank you for joining us today. Um, thank you for participating in 10 Days of Power BI Day 4. Okay, thank you very much. So I hope you learned something today. And you can go online and tweet about anything you learned today. I know today is a bit today was a bit confusing. Today might have seemed a little confusing. So just go over the videos again if you got confused. I hope it clarifies things for you. So thank you very much. And that's the end of today's session.